much as you can enjoy uh, all the, the wonders that is confirmation uh, virtually now. I'm sure you miss being together just as much as we do. Hey, we're going to get started. Uh, I know you're excited about Lulu Bucks and who won the Lulu Bucks um, from filling out the Google form from last week. And so I wanted to, to give away some Lulu dollars, 10 of them, 10 Lulu Bucks. Um, I decided this week, rather than just like randomly uh, picking someone, I was going to start off by picking uh, the person that filled out their form the quickest. And um, let's see, that was, that's right, Carly Brown. Uh, got her form in before anyone else, and so Carly uh, is going to be one of our winners. She beat Izzy Gilberts by 17 minutes, so it was close, uh, 17 minutes. I think that's pretty close, considering it took some people like a day or so after Carly. Uh, so we're going to just give one to Carly, and then I thought I'd draw some randomly. And uh, let's see, the other ones that were uh, Braden Fagley, so congratulations. And then uh, I thought this was kind of funny. Um, fate just has a way of working out. You know, anyone that's feeling bad for, for Izzy being the runner-up and missing it only by 17 minutes, guess what? When we randomly drew names, uh, Izzy actually won too. So congratulations um, to the three of you. You have some Lulu Bucks coming your way. So hopefully y'all uh, were able to catch up with Vicar Kate last week and you heard uh, as we started talking about the Ten Commandments, we heard the story of how the Ten Commandments were originally given to the people um, and how Moses came down from the mountain only to find the people already breaking the Ten Commandments and uh, got kind of upset about that. Um, Vicar Kate asked you in your forum to talk about which one of those Ten Commandments you thought was the most important and uh, saw a lot of answers about honoring thy father and thy mother, saw a lot of answers about thou shall not kill or thou shall not murder. Um, those are great answers. So I just wanted to reflect a little bit on important rules. We all have rules uh, that we follow, rules in our lives. Uh, we, a lot of us have rules at home. When I was growing up, one of the rules that we had in my kitchen was about uh, when to open a box of cereal. This was a really big deal in my home. My dad was very, very uh, insistent that, uh, that I could not open a box of cereal myself, and neither could my sister. So we could eat any cereal that was already open. So I went into my pantry to check out what kind of cereal we have, uh, delicious Fruity Pebbles. Uh, this box is already open, right? So if I came in under my dad's rules to the kitchen right now, I could eat the Fruity Pebbles. You can also eat the Cheerios, those are open too. But uh, this crazy big box of cornflakes, which is really bigger than any box of cornflakes should ever be. I don't know if you can see that, but that box is closed right now, all right? That's not open. So under my dad's rules, I was not allowed to open this. I would actually have to ask permission on a Saturday morning before I could eat breakfast if I wanted the cornflakes. So here's what I should was going to do, because I knew that was an important rule, right? There, and what was really important is you shouldn't lie. So not wanting to lie, here's what I would do. I would go into the pantry, right, which would be like right over here. Uh, I got to take down the, the stocking for this. Um, so I'd open up my pantry and I would find this, uh, this closed box of cereal, right? So I'd take it out and I would open it up, which is against the rules, but hey, all I want to really do is avoid lying, right? So open box now, and then I'd put it back in the pantry. I'd actually do that, close the door, and then I would open it and take out the cornflakes, and then I would eat them. Now, most often my dad would then ask me, hey, what are you doing eating cornflakes? Wasn't that box uh, closed? And I would say, I don't know. When I opened the pantry, it was already open. And see there, I got out of lying to my dad. I got the cornflakes that I wanted. And in my mind, I was keeping, you know, the commandments of, uh, you know, not lying, uh, keeping the commandments about honoring father and mother like you talked about uh, last week. So here's the thing about the commandments. Over time, I think there's been enough, you know, mischievous people uh, like myself, people that would, you know, try to find the loophole and deceive that the church has actually kind of started to interpret the commandments in, in more helpful ways, in, in positive ways. A lot of the commandments say, do not do this. It's kind of like a, a negative way of looking at it. But rather, we started to talk about it as more of like a positive way of looking at it and, and expanding it. So it's not so much, don't do this, but rather, you should do this. And so, for instance, thou shall have no other gods, that first commandment, we've started to talk about that like, well, 
Yes, don't have any other gods, but really what that means is you should love God more than anything else in your life. So last week you talked about what was the most important commandment. Uh, this week I want you guys to talk when you get to your Google form about what commandment is the hardest for you to keep. But before we get there, I want to tell you a little bit more about what the church, what uh, Lutherans have kind of thought historically about these commandments and how we've kind of expanded them and, and made them like kind of positive, but also in a lot of ways harder to keep now. All right, so I already talked about the first commandment. Commandment number two, not taking God's name in vain. That means that you shouldn't just say like, OMG, but it actually means that you should do something in addition, right? Something positive. So that commandment now teaches us that we should use God's name uh, in prayer and in thanksgiving to give praise to God. Uh, the Sabbath day, in order to honor it and keep it holy, we're actually going to want to hear God's word uh, in scripture and in sermons and in worship uh, and, and honor it that way. Um, father and mother, you guys have already talked about how important it is to, to listen to your parents, right? To honor them. But this actually teaches that it's even harder than that because you're supposed to love, serve, and obey them, and not just your parents, but anyone in authority, which I think includes me as well. So you all probably need to up your game on serving me and loving me and obeying me uh, as a person in authority. Uh, commandment number five. I think a lot of people would say like, whew, Finally, a commandment that I don't have trouble keeping. I am a terrible person, but you know what? I've never murdered anyone. Like, I can say that. I've never murdered anyone. So I'm like, whoo, kept commandment five. Never had a problem with that. But actually, we are going to teach that not only should you not kill someone, but you shouldn't do them any harm, physical, spiritual, mental, any kind of emotional harm as well, and that you should actually help people stay like as healthy as possible. Um, so that would kind of expand greatly what it means uh, in Commandment 5 when it says, Thou shall not kill, thou shall not murder. Um, commandment 6, adultery, uh, means that not only should you not cheat on your spouse, but that you should love, honor, serve, and obey your spouse. And so it's not just about don't do this, but it's about all these other things that you should do to help your spouse. Um, commandment number seven, thou shall not steal. I'm guessing a lot of you are like, well, I've maybe done just a little bit of stealing in my life, but for the most part, I've been able not to steal. Well, actually, again, it's not just about taking something that belongs to someone else, but you should do something, you should do lots of things to help everyone you know keep all of their possessions. That's what the seventh commandment is really about. And therefore, you have to ask yourself, what have you done today, or yesterday, the last week, to make sure that someone doesn't lose the things that they value, that they're, that they're holding on to, that are their possessions? Uh, commandment number eight is maybe the hardest of, of all. Uh, thou shall not bear false witness or, um, you know, you shouldn't lie about other people. It's not so much about, you know, saying things that aren't true about other people. Uh, this is maybe one of the, the hardest things, like I said, but also one of the best things that Martin Luther uh, and the Lutheran Church has taught over the years. We should actually, because of the Eighth Commandment, like speak really well of each other and and to speak of each other's actions the things that we do in the best possible way um, and so I just think about all the times that I say things about Pastor Dane and even if there are things that are true about him uh, I break the eighth commandment because I'm not I'm not talking about his actions and interpreting them in, in the best possible way and so Commandment number eight teaches us that, you know, in everything that we say and do, we should, we should really be giving the benefit of the doubt um, to those around us. Commandments nine and ten are about coveting. You shall not covet a long list of things. Uh, our society really works really well. Um, like every time we go to the mall or watch a commercial, it's really teaching us to covet things that other people have. So I personally break this one all the time. I think most Americans probably do as well. Um, but not only are we not supposed to want or desire or, or try to kind of get things that um, belong to other people, but we're supposed to, just like in, when we talked about stealing, we're supposed to help people keep those things and, and to feel good about the things that they have um, and not to try to you know, cheat or swindle or, or trick them in uh, to anything, but to, to keep that everyone's able to keep their own things and, uh, and to keep them in good condition. Um, so those drastically changed that what was already a pretty long and sometimes hard list of things that we were supposed to not do. Um, now we've learned that 
there's actually things that we can do positively uh, to affect all of those as well and learn from that. Um, so next time you're thinking about those commandments, it's not just about trying to find a way to, to get the cereal open to avoid lying. It's actually about being as honest as you possibly can and, and not deceiving. And so I have to admit then that I would have broken those commandments uh, when I did my little trick uh, with the cereal box as a kid. All right, so what's next? Next, you're almost like halfway there for the Lulu Bucks. Next, I need you to, to jump back online. Uh, you're probably already online watching this actually. So you're gonna stay online, uh, fill out that form, answer some questions. I've already told you one of the questions is going to be, what is the hardest commandment for you to keep? So give that one some thought, give us a really good answer for that one. Uh, I don't know isn't going to cut it this week for those of you that might have answered that way in the past. Not going to get it done if you want the Lulu Bucks. So give it some thought. What's the hardest commandment for you to keep? Uh, have a great week. Come back next week. We're going to be talking more about the commandments. we got one more week of Ten Commandments for you uh, before we take a break for Christmas, which I think we're all looking forward to, to that. Um, stay tuned for more on the Ten Commandments and go fill out that Google form. Have a great week.